Welcome to PNN, Plaza Homes YouTube channel. I am Haruka Haze from Plaza Homes. When renting a property in Japan, you may be at a loss because customs are different from those in your home country. Today, we will go over the various issues and questions that foreign residents face when renting a home in Japan. We regularly provide valuable information about real estate in Japan. Please subscribe to our channel and don't forget to hit the little bell button to get notifications of our upcoming videos. Now, let's take a look at renting homes in Japan. Today, we have Ms. Sumie Nakamura, manager from Expat Housing Division. Hello, I'm Sumie Nakamura, a real estate agent of Plaza Homes. For the past 15 years, I have been working with rental apartments for many expats at Plaza Homes. Based on this experience, I would like to talk about useful and good to know information regarding the, some of the issues foreigners face when looking for housing in Japan and also while living in rented properties in Japan. The topics that I have prepared are what you might not have heard before or some things that might be unique and special only in the Japanese rental residences. This presentation will be suitable for those who are new to Japan and considering renting a home in Japan in the future as well as for those who have already living in rented properties in Japan I hope that this presentation will make your life in Japan even better and happier one. I would like to discuss various and detailed information regarding living in a rented property that are not necessarily stated in the lease contract documents. I come up with today's topics based on the questions that I have been asked a lot from my actual clients through my work or the communication with them that makes me feel that I would like to share with all of you at this kind of opportunity like today. One. Greeting your new neighbors. 2. Is it okay if I make holes to hang things on my apartment walls? 3. Is it possible to rent an apartment if I have pets? 4. What modern Japanese bathrooms are like? 5. How to handle the keys for your rented property? 6. Why do you have to get renter's insurance? 7. What you're not allowed to do in a rental property? Greeting your new neighbors. This might be a total surprise for you, or you may have heard, but in Japan, we have some traditional customs to do when you move to a new property. This is not only limited to rented properties, but also for purchased properties to move in. It is well known that we, Japanese, think highly of maintaining harmony with people around us, which applies here, too. For that, and also to give your new neighbors or landlord if rented, a good impression and peace of mind, it is the first thing to do, usually on the day one, that we go knock on the neighbor's door to introduce ourselves, along with simple greetings, for example, my name is Sumie Nakamura, we are a family of four, nice to meet you. Of course, no details of your background story will be necessary. Not only greetings and words that we give to the new neighbors, but also important to bring a small gift, such as sweets, tea, mini towels, etc. as a token of goodwill. So, to have a good start in the new place, it is a good idea and is recommended to greet your new neighbors. However, in a big city like Tokyo in a real life, it is also true that more Japanese people, especially younger generations, for example singles, living in apartments, this custom of greeting new neighbors are getting scarce. I am often asked by my polite and well-researched foreign clients if they should go greet new neighbors when they move in. So, I ask them first what a type of apartment building or neighborhood they plan to move in. Then, I advise them if they should go or not greet their new neighbors. Is it okay if I make holes to hang things on my apartment walls? For foreigners, hanging family photos, art pictures, posters, calendars, clocks, even installing shelves and many other decorative items on the walls, might be nothing too special to do in their place to live. However, this could be a big problem or may cost you when you move out of the rented property. As you all probably know, when moving out of the rented property, the renter is responsible for the damages that they have made during their stay. And damages include any holes that you make on the walls. However, not all the holes that you make to hang your things on the walls would lead to a huge cost to pay, and there are certain rules about this. According to the guidelines set forth by the Ministry of Land, Infrastructure, Transport and Tourism, holes made by thumbtacks or other small pins are the result of ordinary daily activities, 
so the cost of repair is to be covered by the landlord, so no cost to the renters. For examples, these are very practical pins, called magical hooks, and easy to install just like thumbtacks, and leave almost no hole marks, so ideal for hanging calendars, posters and light clocks. Load capacity can be selected from 4 kg and 8 kg. On the other hand, holes that are the size of nails, screws, or even larger, are beyond the normal wear and tear of ordinary use. So in this case, the cost of repair is to be at the tenant's expense when you move out. If the hole reaches deep into the wall, the repair cost could be really high. I have had some foreign clients who shipped artworks, drawings, which are quite heavy, and understand that they would like to decorate them on the walls. It is okay to hang them by making holes on the walls, but you will have to accept the restoration cost upon your leave. Alternatively, you may make a request to the landlord to ask them to install picture rails on the wall, which is a thin molding that is adhered on the top of the walls horizontally running along the walls. With picture rails, you do not need to make big holes and can hang quite heavy items without getting charged for the repairs. Is it possible to rent an apartment if I have pets? For people from abroad, to live with pet animals might be nothing but usual. When I was living in the US, whether living in an apartment or house, it seemed that most people were living with pets. Especially dogs and it looked as that of having a pet in the rented property was not a factor to limit the choice of rented properties. But in Japan, residential properties have very strict rules regarding the ownership of pets. Usually, standalone houses are less strict and apartment buildings are much more difficult for pets to be accepted. Actually, whether accepted or not are decided and enforced by the owner of the property or the management company. So, if the owner is okay with pets, this owner's property is okay with pets. And if the owner does not like pets to be in their rented property, naturally no pets are accepted in the property. So, there are cases that even in the same building, there are units that agree and disagree to pets. Even if pets are allowed to be in the rental properties, there are still restrictions that you have to follow. What type of pets you have, how many pets you have, and the size of your pets. These factors are really crucial, and each rental property has their own rules. Most acceptable and popular pet to have in the rental apartment is one small dog or cat. Two dogs, cats could be okay, but more than two dogs, cats or mixed with dogs and cats would be very difficult to find a pet welcomed rental property. In some cases, there are rental properties that say dogs are okay, but no cats, and vice versa, but this is totally up to the owner's preference. The weight of the animal that is considered to be small, will be up to 10 kilograms and you have to be able to hold the pet in your arms, and up to 20 kilograms is considered to be the middle size and more than 20 kilograms is large size. There was a funny story in our agency that one client from overseas, during the search for his options before his arrival to Japan, he kept saying to one of our colleagues that his pet is just a baby and how cute and quiet etc., only turned out after his arrival, that his dog was over 20 kilograms, but he was just calling his dog his baby, but the size was not baby at all. Of course, my colleague had to search for his options all over again. Apparently large size dogs are really difficult to be accepted, and if dogs are thought of as fighting, aggressive, or hunting dogs, it will almost impossible to be accepted, even if they are gentle or quiet. Even small animals such as hamsters, birds, and reptiles, can be refused depending on owners. If you do live in an apartment building with your pets, it is very important to be considerate for your neighbors. It is one of basic rule that you hold your pets or put them in a cage in common spaces such as hallways, lobby or elevator. In some apartment buildings, you might see a pet button in the elevator. This pet button is pushed when a pet owner enters the elevator with their pet along with the floor button. To let other residents who are waiting for the elevator, know that there will be an animal in the elevator when it arrives at their floor. Once the button inside the elevator is pushed, the notice outside the elevator door on each floor will light up with the word pet, and then everyone who is waiting for the elevator knows the button has been pushed. This way, people with a fear of animals or allergies can avoid a potentially bad situation and take the stairs, wait for the next elevator, or just walk away. This pet button thing is something very unique in Japan. And I believe that this cannot be seen in any other countries. What modern Japanese bathrooms are like? It might be well known worldwide that Japanese people love taking baths. Japanese bathrooms are considered as a place of rest and relaxation for soaking in a bath, than simply washing. In contrary to some Western cultures, where people shower in the morning as a way to wake up and start the day, most Japanese bathe in the evening before heading to bed, as a way to relax and heal their fatigue.
You may be surprised, but people here spend at least 30 minutes a day soaking in hot tubs. With such a love for bathing, Japanese bathrooms are way more advanced and luxurious than what you can find in other countries. First of all, the bathroom in a typical Japanese home consists of two rooms, an entrance room where you undress and which is equipped with a sink, and the actual bathroom which are separated from the showering, washing area from the bathing area of a deep bathtub. The bathtub is for soaking, not washing, so you are supposed to first rinse your body outside the bathtub in the shower area before you enter the bathtub. For families with multiple people, the hot water is usually left for the next family member of the house and the hot water is not drained after each person takes a bath which means everyone will use the same water for one evening, which is why it is very important to wash before you take a bath at the beginning. By the way, one of the most frequently asked questions about the bathroom during the viewing tour, is about this item, which you can see almost every bathroom in Japan. This is a lid to cover the bathtub after you finish taking a bath. This lid is covered over the bathtub so that the hot water can keep the temperature as warm as possible for the next family member to take the bath. Now, I would like to introduce you some of the advanced technologies and functions of bathrooms in Japanese homes. 1. Japanese Automated Bathroom High-Tech Water Controller In relatively new properties and recently renovated properties in Japan, bathrooms have many high-tech automated features that are controlled with a wall-mounted controller. There are many features available that allow you to take a convenient and comfortable bath. Some of the things you can do with a touch of the control panel include setting the time and the temperature you would like your bath to be ready, reheating the water, or making the water cooler etc. This type of control panel alerts you in Japanese when the bath is ready, when someone is calling you from the bath, when you change the water temperature, or when any other settings have been changed. 2. Heating and drying function. The bathroom heating function works by using hot air from the ceiling vent to warm up the bathroom so that you don't feel cold when removing clothing during the cold winters. You can also dry the entire bathroom with the drying function. The drying function also allows you to dry clothes in the bathroom, as in the photo below, which is great for days when you can't hang your clothes outside, rainy days, hay fever season, windy days, etc. 3. Bathroom TV. In some properties there is a TV installed in the bathroom. Many of these TVs allow you to watch TV programs, connect to the internet, and enjoy a wide range of movies and programs. 4. Neck and Shoulder Bath. With a neck and shoulder bath, you can enjoy having warm bathing water gently caressing your shoulders and neck. In this special bathtub, you can achieve total relaxation. A jacuzzi function is also included with this style of bath. 5. Micro Bubble Bath. A micro bubble bath system uses a pump to saturate water with millions of tiny oxygen bubbles, making the water soft and white. Even without using bath salts, its bubbles will warm up your body. The bubbles are so small that they can enter your skin's pores and gently cleansing and softening your skin. The amount of time your skin will remain hydrated and smooth after taking a micro bubbles type bath is much longer than a normal bath. 6. Overhead Shower. This large shower mixes the water with air and in turn uses less water. Not only can you enjoy the soft texture of water raining down on you, but you can also save a lot of water. Japanese shower heads are also highly functional. 7. Mist Sauna. The mist sauna has various benefits such as perspiration, improving blood circulation, body temperature keeping effect, and moisturizing effects. It's just like having a sauna at home. 8. Thermo Tiles, Non-Cold Tiles. With Thermo Tiles, your feet will feel less cold on the tiles because they have special structures. 9. Automatic Bathtub Cleaner. An automatic bathtub cleaner cleans the bathtub automatically, you can operate it before preparing the bath, or after using the bath. 10. Automated Bathroom Floor Cleaner. A floor cleaner washes and disinfects the bathroom floor. Simply press the button to operate it, and it automatically cleans the floor. Japan has a bathing culture, as a result of the Japanese being very fond of taking baths. For that reason, bathroom-related technologies keep evolving day by day in Japan. You will be amazed by these functions, designs, and technologies of a modern Japanese bathroom, even at home. Wouldn't it be great to experience this modern Japanese bathroom features in your next apartment, or house in Japan? About the key handling for a rented property. You might think the key to your rented property is just a key, and it is a small thing that you could care less. Actually, it is not. 
Usually, you are given at least two or three keys to your rented property, on the lease starting date, and you are expected to return all these keys that you were given on your day one to the property owner or management company, on the date of your move out without any loss. If you happen to lose any of the keys during the tenancy, you will have to compensate the expense equivalent for replacing the new cylinder lock, and the expense will be deducted from your deposit. It may seem a bit too strict a rule for a lessee, but a key is really important. When you live in a detached house and your house key is lost or stolen, your concern would be only about your household goods or yourself. However, when you live in an apartment with an auto lock system entrance, and your entrance key is lost or stolen, it will cause the risk that somebody else who has picked up the key is able to get in from the main entrance. That may cause various troubles or serious damages, not only to you, but also to other residents in the same apartment building. Now, if you lose a key to your apartment, how much will a cylinder lock replacement cost? The kinds of keys and its cost varies depending on the property. The cost is to be calculated by, for example, how many cylinder locks are installed in the entrance door, usually one or two, or by whether the key is a conventional insert type, or non-contact type with IC chip in it, and it is somewhere from 15,000 yen to 30,000 yen or so, but, for more luxurious properties, special and higher security performance is used and in some cases, they are manufactured in foreign countries, and that could end up being over a couple of hundred and thousand yen. Therefore, taking special attention in handling a key for your rented property to prevent possible high cost to pay is really important and should be kept in mind. By the way, during your lease period, if you would like to have an extra key or two, you cannot just duplicate the keys on your own at a key store. The owners or property managements would like to keep track of the number of the keys that you have for their rented property, and need to file on their record, so it is stated in the lease contract that you are to ask the owner's permission first to make a key before you do. In highly secure apartment buildings, the property owners have a special code to make extra keys so that their rented property keys cannot be duplicated without their knowledge, and this will keep the rented apartment much safer, too. Home Insurance when you sign up for your lease contract, one of the requirements that you have to have for your rented property, is a home insurance. It is clearly stated in any lease contract that lessee is required to have a home, fire insurance. For foreigners, getting a housing insurance as a tenant may sound not familiar or unusual, since I get pretty often asked by my clients, why a tenant has to get a housing insurance, and not the landlords. Yes, they have to. The property owners of course have their properties insured, at their expense. But what if a tenant cause a fire by accident? Who would have to pay for the damages that your bathtub or washing machine overflows accidentally, and cause water leaks to your neighbors living downstairs, or your energetic children break the windows while playing around in the living room? The landlord's insurance won't cover these damages, and you would be held responsible legally to recover the damage and the repairs. As you can imagine, the cost for that would be enormous, from a couple of millions of yen or more. So obviously, it is very important to have a home insurance before the lease starting date. Now, I am going to explain what a home insurance covers. Home insurance coverage mainly includes these three categories. 1. Home contents. These are your possessions, such as furniture, electric appliances, clothes, some artworks, and so on. When those items are damaged by fire, lighting, strong winds, typhoon, flood, you can claim for the compensation. Also, even in a case that a burglar broke into your home, and those items are stolen, you can claim for the compensation, or even a case like you hit a door of a room, and made a big hole by accident, or dropped some hard objects on the floor, and damaged the floor, you can claim for the compensation. However, there are some exceptions that home insurance does not cover, such as computers, smartphones, cash, credit card, or valuables of jewel, expensive artworks. 2. Tenant liability. This is the main reason that the tenant is required to have a home insurance for the lease contract, as I mentioned earlier. This covers accidents causing damage inside the rented property, or even to your neighbor's unit by fire or overflow. 3. Personal liability. This might sound irrelevant for home insurance, but any home insurance comes with this part of compensation, and you cannot remove this. However, this compensation is really good to have and helpful in case of an emergency. What it covers is that, 
In case you or your family member damage someone else's property or injure them by accident during daily life, this part of your insurance plan would cover the compensation that you are held responsible. For example, if you are riding on a bicycle and run into someone on the street, your dog bites and injures other people while taking a walk, this insurance will cover the medical costs. How much does home insurance cost? An average home insurance costs somewhere between 20,000 yen to 40,000 yen for two years. This insurance premium should vary, though, depending on the type of your rented property, the size or how old they are. Also, the compensation amount can be selected by each tenant according to their needs, preferences. The higher compensation gets, the higher the premium costs get. This is a one-time fee that you pay upon signing, and it is to be renewed as long as you stay in the rented property. A home insurance company will send you a renewal notice a few months before the expiration, so please be sure that you keep renewing, otherwise, you would find yourself in trouble when unexpected accident happens. Prohibited matters in a rental property. Finally, I am going to talk about the prohibited matters that are stated in the rented property. Some of them are common sense, but some might sound a bit strict or unfamiliar to foreigners, but in Japan, these are something that we all have in mind. 1. No barbecue on the balcony or garden in an apartment. This is one of the most commonly asked questions that we get when showing the places to foreigners. It is mostly okay in a standalone house, but for apartments, absolutely not. Even if you have a nice and spacious outside terrace, it is strictly prohibited, since this causes smell or noise to your neighbors. 2. No shoes in the rented property. 3. No drying clothes in the balcony in the certain high-rise apartment building, especially in the center of Tokyo. 4. No altering or changing the room. 5. No playing musical instruments in most of the apartments, especially guitar, violin, etc. But if you can put a silencer on them, or electric ones that you can use them, no problem. 6. No smoking at the communal area including on your own balcony. 7. No placing or leaving your personal items in front of your entrance door, since that is considered to be common space. Bicycles, children's play items, or golf bag. In a very strict place, if you leave a wet umbrella outside of your door until it gets dry, the manager of the building could come to your door, to tell you to take it back to your apartment. 8. In a rare case, some foreigners think that they are okay to put their personal items in the rented property, one day before the lease starting date, but this is not the case in Japan. You can start putting your personal items from the lease starting date. From now, I would like to introduce about Plaza Homes. Plaza Homes, we are specialized in all aspects of buying, selling and renting a property, for both Japanese and foreign clients. Over 50 years, we have built up a strong reputation as one of the most trusted property experts in Tokyo, as well as providing comprehensive property management services, and expatriate support business throughout the country. We offer a wide variety of properties for rent and sale, and provide property information in English. If you are interested in renting, leasing, buying, or selling real estate in Japan or in Tokyo, please check our website. We also run a website called Japan Living Guide, which provides the latest information on a variety of topics, from daily life to administrative procedures, medical care, the Japanese language, childcare, and leisure, in order to make it easier for foreign residents to live comfortably in Japan. That is all for renting homes in Japan. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us anytime. We offer a wide variety of properties for rent and sale, and provide property information in English. If you are interested in renting, leasing, buying, or selling real estate in Japan or in Tokyo, please check our website. We also run a website called Japan Living Guide, which provides living information. Thank you so much for watching. If you found today's video useful, please don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel. Please hit the little bell button as well to get notifications of our upcoming videos. If you have any questions or thoughts, we would love to hear them in the comments too. See you next time!